Bonjour tout le monde. Good afternoon. <coughs> Merci Anita pour votre allocution et surtout pour tout le travail que vous faites pour soutenir l'Ukraine. Je suis très heureux aujourd'hui d'être en compagnie d'Ivan Baker, qui est un grand défenseur de, de l'Ukraine et une voix forte pour les valeurs canadiennes dans notre Parlement. Merci Ivan pour tout ce que tu fais. I'm honored as well to be here with the Canadian Armed Forces Service Members at the Fort York Armory. The motto of one of the units here is mindful of our ancient valor. But today, we are also mindful of Ukraine's enduring valor. But before I begin, I do want to address the humanitarian crisis in Turkey and Syria. Powerful quakes have killed tens of thousands, destroyed hundreds of thousands of homes, and displaced millions of people. Canadians have been heartbroken by the images they've seen, and they want to help. So today, we announced that Canada will match $10 million in donations raised by the Humanitarian Coalition and its members. This is in addition to our commitment to match donations to the Canadian Red Cross Earthquake in Turkey and Syria appeal. Nous annonçons aussi que nous allons verser 20 millions de dollars de plus en aide humanitaire directe en réponse à l'appel des Nations Unies pour la Turquie et la Syrie. En tout, le Canada s'est engagé à verser 50 millions de dollars à la suite du tremblement de terre pour aider à offrir une aide vitale aux gens touchés sous la forme de nourriture, d'eau, de couverture et de services de santé. Le Canada restera solidaire avec ces gens qui souffrent tant. That earthquake was a reminder that there are tragedies that cannot be prevented, natural disasters that take lives and cause inescapable devastation. But there are also entirely senseless but avoidable tragedies born of evil, like what the world has witnessed in Ukraine. Millions of Ukrainians have been forced to flee their homes and their fellow citizens are dying every day. Not because of an act of God, but because of the cowardly acts of one man, Vladimir Putin and his enablers. A year ago, Putin invaded a sovereign, democratic country. He was driven by greed, by cruelty. He was under the illusion that he could overtake Ukraine in a matter of days. Well, 365 days later, Ukraine is still standing strong. 365 days and counting. Il y a un an maintenant, le Kremlin a commencé à lancer des attaques brutales qui ont tué des civils et pris pour cible des maisons, des hôpitaux. Les intimidateurs, comme le président Poutine, ne comprendront jamais que la peur est une arme impuissante contre ceux qui se battent pour leur liberté. À répétition, la défense ukrainienne a résisté à l'agression russe. But we know that this fight is not over. Today, Canada is announcing new military support for our friends in Ukraine. We will deliver four additional Leopard 2 tanks to the armed forces of Ukraine and an armored recovery vehicle. This is in addition to the four Leopard tanks already in the region, which CAF members are right now training Ukrainian tank members to use. We're also delivering 5,000 rounds of ammunition which will help the armed forces of Ukraine continue to defend their freedom and fight for Ukraine's territorial integrity. Another critical part of our support is to impose further costs on Russia for its illegal and unjustifiable actions. We are announcing new sanctions on 129 individuals and 63 entities, including Russian deputy prime ministers, ministers, other members of the Office of the President of Russia, members of the Russian military, and those involved in the production of artillery and weapons used in Ukraine. 
We're also banning certain chemicals used in the manufacture of electronics from being exported to Russia. Et nous luttons contre les pratiques commerciales trompeuses que la Russie et le Belarus emploient pour fausser les prix et s'attaquer aux producteurs canadiens. Depuis le début, ces deux pays mentent au sujet de l'invasion et ils mentent au sujet de la valeur de leurs marchandises. En réponse à cela, nous donnons à l'Agence des services frontaliers du Canada de nouveaux outils pour protéger l'intégrité de nos marchés et surtout protéger les producteurs canadiens contre ces interventions malhonnêtes. Le Canada a mené la charge à l'échelle mondiale pour instaurer le régime de sanctions le plus sévère qui n'a jamais été imposé à une grande économie et pour réduire la capacité du président Poutine à financer cette guerre illégale. I want to be clear, however, that our quarrel is not with the people of Russia or of Belarus. Many brave people in these countries are standing up to their dictators. And we see it here at home, too, with Russian Canadians supporting Ukraine and calling for an end to this unjust invasion. Vladimir Putin made a grave miscalculation when he launched his war of aggression. He underestimated Ukrainians, and he underestimated the solidarity of their friends around the world. He wanted to threaten and weaken NATO and democracies around the world. But today, we are stronger and more unified than ever. Aux Nations Unies, une majorité écrasante de pays ont maintes fois voté pour condamner la guerre et réclame, réclamer qu'elle prenne fin. Encore une fois, ils l'ont fait encore une fois hier. Et la Cour pénale internationale poursuit son enquête sur les crimes de guerre commis par la Russie en Ukraine. Together with our friends and allies, we are holding Putin and his henchmen to account. And we are delivering critical and significant support to Ukraine. Momentum is on Ukraine's side. They have launched astonishing counter-offensives, reclaimed territory, and forced Russian troop withdrawals. To date, Canada has provided more than $5 billion in support to Ukraine and its people. And we're the only country to issue Ukraine sovereignty bonds, which Canadians purchased to support the government of Ukraine directly. The impacts of these are being felt on the ground by soldiers and by citizens. We've provided military training for more than 35,000 members of Ukraine's security forces through Operation Unifier. We've delivered M777 howitzers that have helped Ukraine secure victories in key battles. We've committed over 200 Canadian-made armored vehicles that are helping soldiers defend the border in northern Ukraine. Nous avons acheté un système national de missiles surface air perfectionné pour renforcer la défense ukrainienne contre les raids aériens russes. Nous avons fait don de huit chars d'assaut en collaboration avec nos alliés pour aider l'Ukraine à gagner sur le champ de bataille. Nous avons imposé des sanctions à plus de 2400 personnes et entités et notamment pris les devants pour imposer des sanctions à la Banque centrale russe. Our support is also helping provide stability in Ukraine in the face of war, so that schools and hospitals can stay open, so that the heat and lights will stay on through the winter, and so that the government of Ukraine can continue supporting its people. Le Canada is solidaire de l'Ukraine depuis le début de ce conflit, quand la Russie a annexé illégalement la Crimée et déclenché un conflit dans l'est de l'Ukraine. Et nous allons rester solidaires de l'Ukraine. Ce matin, mes homologues du G7 et moi avons discuté directement avec le président Zelensky. Nous avons réaffirmé que notre soutien à l'Ukraine restera inébranlable aussi longtemps qu'il le faudra. 
Nous avons appelé la Russie à retirer immédiatement, complètement et sans condition ses forces militaires du territoire ukrainien à l'intérieur des frontières internationalement reconnues du pays. Putin is dangerous, he is cowardly, and he is weak. His brazen disregard for human life, his irresponsible rhetoric, and his willingness to inflict terrible violence on innocent people may seem to have no limits. But what is truly without limits is the courage and resolve of those who fight every day for their freedom the everyday Ukrainian citizens who joined the armed forces, the children who had to be brave and say goodbye to a parent or grandparent so they could be safer here in Canada, the soldiers, nurses, doctors, mayors, postal workers, and so many more who have stayed in Ukraine and continue to serve the place that they call home and preserve the Ukraine that they are fighting for the journalists on the front lines who tell the stories of this war so that Russian abetted disinformation and misinformation is called to account. And of course, the people here at home and around the world who donate what they can and fly the blue and yellow flag in solidarity. This solidarity is on full display in every corner of Canada. Canadians are standing with Ukrainians, while Ukrainians are standing up for more than their own freedom, they are standing up for all of us. Slava Ukraini. Royam Slava. Minister, merci le Premier ministre et la ministre Anand et aussi Mr. Baker. We have 20 minutes for questions from media. Nous avons 20 minutes pour les questions de media. And we will begin with uh, Laura Stone from the Globe and Mail. A vous la parole. Hi, Prime Minister. Thank you for taking our questions. I wanted to ask on another topic uh, regarding China. Um, you said yesterday there were many inaccuracies in the leaks from CSIS. Can you explain exactly what is inaccurate in these leaked CSIS reports? First of all, I think Canadians understand how important it is that we continue uh, to do all the necessary work with our national security institutions to keep Canadians safe, to keep our institutions safe. And Canadians can be and should be confident that our institutions, particularly our electoral and democratic processes, have not been compromised, were not compromised in the 2019 or 2021 elections. We created mechanisms in, for both uh, before the 2019 elections, a panel, a task force, to ensure that the outcome of these elections were decided by Canadians and Canadians alone. And that's exactly what happened. At the same time, we've been very clear throughout that foreign governments like China, Russia and others are attempting to destabilize our democracies and, yes, interfere with our electoral processes. We need to remain vigilant. We need to be continuing to support our national security agencies and, uh, and uh, officials to protect and continue to protect uh, the legitimacy and the integrity of our elections. That's also why uh, we continue to support and encourage the work being hap happening at various committees, the various uh, investigations and follow-ups, and the uh, level to which this is being taken seriously by all Canadians, because it is a very serious subject. I will highlight, for example, around inaccuracies, uh, that when the National Security and Intelligence Advisor uh, appeared at committee uh, a number of weeks or months ago, uh, she highlighted uh, inaccuracies that were contained in uh, some of these media leaks. Uh, but we will continue uh, to respect uh, the importance of uh, national security laws and rules. Follow-up. Uh okay. Ce qui est le plus important dans tout ça, c'est de comprendre que les Canadiens sachent et puissent être confiants que l'intégrité de nos élections en 2019, en 2021, n'ont pas été compromises 
que oui, malgré le fait, et on en parle depuis longtemps, que la Chine, la Russie et d'autres pays essayent d'interférer dans nos démocraties, essayent de déstabiliser notre société, essayent euh, de compromettre nos processus électoraux, ils n'ont pas réussi. Et on a des experts en sécurité nationaux, nationale, on a des, euh, des, euh, des hauts fonctionnaires qui ont été mis en position d'évaluer l'impact de cette interférence, des mesures que nous avons prises en tant que gouvernement depuis 2019 parce qu'on prenait cet enjeu extrêmement au sérieux. Les Canadiens peuvent avoir confiance dans l'intégrité de nos élections. Mais comme on dit depuis 2019 et bien avant, et comme on continue de répéter, oui, la Chine et d'autres pays essayent d'interférer dans nos démocraties. C'est pour ça que nous allons continuer de travailler avec nos agences de sécurité et de renseignement. Nous allons encourager le travail qui se fait en comité parlementaire et par différents experts pour continuer de se doter d'encore plus d'outils pour assurer la protection de nos démocraties. Par rapport à des, des erreurs, bien, on a vu quand euh, la, euh, la conseillère en sécurité et intelligence nationale a paru en comité parlementaire. Elle a souligné euh, des éléments euh, non factuels dans euh, les documents qui ont été partagés avec les médias il y a plusieurs mois. Thank you. I think we're talking about more recent reports, though. So, um, will you declassify the reports so that the public can see them for themselves? And will you establish a public inquiry into Chinese interference in the past two elections as called for by the former uh, electoral officer, Jean-Pierre Kingsley? I think it is a very good thing that Canadians are understanding how serious it is uh, that China and other countries are continuing to try to destabilize and influence our democracies and our institutions. That's why we have continually given new resources and new tools, including a panel and a task force that we set up way back in 2019 to ensure that our election integrity held, that our national security experts are able to do the work that Canadians expect them to do. We welcome the work that committees are doing. We'll continue to work to give all the tools necessary uh, to, our in, in, uh, to our national security agencies so that Canadians can continue uh, to be confident that we are taking this as seriously as it must be. And I say again, we are taking this extremely seriously and always have. Thank you. Next question. Afternoon, Prime Minister. Uh, Candy Chen with CTV National News. I'd like to ask you about the Canada-Ukraine Authorization for Emergency Travel Program, which has provided Ukrainian with visas the most crucial necessities while they are seeking shelter and health care. So that federal program is scheduled to end uh, next month. Will that be replaced or extended? Um, Canadians continue to demonstrate every day their solidarity with Ukraine and with Ukrainians. Uh, what I saw this morning sitting down with uh, young people who'd uh, come from Ukraine over the past year and years, whether I see the generosity that's happening, whether it's here or Winnipeg or anywhere across the country, of Canadians giving to support uh, people who are fleeing this violence and fearing for their loved ones' lives, the generosity of Canadians, the desire of people across this country to continue to help knows no bounds. A year in, um, we're all of somewhat mixed feelings. Knowing that Putin was expecting this war to be over in a matter of days or weeks, knowing that he was unable to, despite overwhelming military numbers and advantages and resources, should be a point of deep gratitude and respect to Ukrainians who've stood up to defend the values that underpin all of our democracies, but also is every day an ongoing tragedy for the people of Ukraine who are suffering bombings and hardships and difficulties because of Putin's illegal invasion. 
So Canada, at its simplest, most simple expression, will continue to stand with Ukraine with whatever it takes for as long as it takes. And in regards to the special uh, travel authorizations, uh, we are looking at right now how the best way for us to continue to support Ukraine and the Ukrainian people. Uh, and we will be uh, uh, talking about that in the coming weeks to make sure that everyone knows that Canada will continue to do what is best positioned to continue to help the people of Ukraine. Just a quick follow up. Um, there are still over 30,000 more applications waiting to be processed. So what's going to happen to those Ukrainians while we are still figuring it out, um, while the program expired? We are continuing to process applications. We are continuing to respond to the deep desire by Canadians, by communities, by families across this country to do more for the people of Ukraine, and we will. Thank you. Next question. Good afternoon, Prime Minister. Matthew Bingley with Global News. What do you make of Russia's disinformation campaigns trying to weaken support for Ukraine both here and in the West? It's absolutely no surprise that Russia is spreading lies around the world because the truth is so damning to them. They chose to violate the UN Charter and international law. They chose to violate the foundational principles of territorial integrity and sovereignty in an act of cowardly greed and conquest that has proven to be a terrible, terrible error in judgment on Putin's part, both because he deeply underestimated the strength, the courage, the valor of Ukrainians and their desire to defend their language, their culture, their land, but also because he underestimated the fact that the world would not stand by while he violated the sovereignty, the integrity, and the principles of self-determination of a peaceful democracy. So we will continue to stand for the truth. We will continue to answer his lies and misinformation with truth uh, and continue uh, to make sure that people all around the world understand uh, what a terrible, terrible act uh, this was by Vladimir Putin in choosing to s launch a war by invading Ukraine even further. What more, though, could Canada be doing to effectively counter these disinformation campaigns? Obviously, Canada continues to work uh, with uh, partners around the world on uh, spreading information uh, to the Russian people, who we increasingly see are reeling from the human costs and the economic costs of Putin's illegal war on Russians themselves. We will continue to support brave journalists who are telling the truth, who are sharing actual news and facts around the world. We will continue to ensure that there is no place for the lies that Putin is sharing. And we will continue to impress upon Canadians how important it is uh, to uh, be thoughtful and critical as they engage uh, online and are faced with tremendous amounts of misinformation. Question question. Uh, Yannick Lepage, Radio-Canada. Sur l'Ukraine, craignez-vous que la Chine s'implique uh, militairement aux côtés de la Russie dans la guerre? C'est certain qu'on aimerait bien que la Chine soit plus forte sur la défense des principes de souveraineté. C'est toujours un principe que la Chine a souligné d'importance à l'échiquier mondial dans les discussions diplomatiques à l'international, l'importance de respecter la souveraineté de chaque pays. Or, quand il est question de respect et de défense de la souveraineté de l'Ukraine, la Chine manque de conviction et de fermeté dans tout ce qu'ils ont à dire là-dessus. Mais en tant que G7, En tant que partenaire à, à travers le monde, nous avons été très, très clairs 
que euh, d'aider ou d'endosser la Russie dans cette attaque illégale et irresponsable contre l'Ukraine serait une très mauvaise idée. Et nous allons continuer euh, de souligner ça avec nos partenaires chinois. Et au sujet de l'ingérence chinoise, est-ce que vous croyez que c'est suffisamment préoccupant pour euh, nécessiter une enquête publique? Je pense que c'est une bonne chose que les Canadiens sont très conscients de ce qu'on dit depuis plusieurs années, que la Chine essaie de s'ingérer dans nos processus démocratiques au Canada. C'est pour ça, d'ailleurs, qu'il y a bien des années, en début 2019, on a créé un panel de hauts fonctionnaires pour gérer, pour uh, uh, suivre et intervenir, si nécessaire, dans nos processus électoraux pour contrer de l'ingérence. Mais aussi, on a donné plus d'outils à, à nos agences de sécurité et de renseignement pour s'assurer de l'intégrité de nos élections. Et uh, j'accueille avec grande ouverture le travail que font différents comités de parlementaires pour faire des suivis sur cet enjeu. Et nous allons continuer d'en discuter et de répondre concrètement avec des outils sur ce qu'on sait, ce qui s'est passé en 2019-2021 et qu'on va devoir continuer à lutter contre dans les années à venir aussi. Hi, Megan McLeister, CBC News. Um, Prime Minister, what do you make of the three Conservative MPs, including a member of Shadow Cabinet, who met with a member of the far-right German AFD party? I think the Conservative Party of Canada owes some explanations to Canadians. We've seen consistently a pattern from Conservative politicians whether it's uh, attaching a misogynistic YouTube tag uh, to reach out to uh, anti-women groups online through YouTube videos, the answer is, oh, we didn't know about it. There's nothing to see here. A conservative leader uh, meets with a known far-right extremist. Oh, we didn't know who it was. Consistently, we see conservative parliamentarians and people who should know better associating themselves with folks responsible for a particularly vile level of rhetoric and hatred. And their answer is all the same. Oh, we didn't know. One point Canadians you know, need to stop being treated like fools and the conservatives need to own up and either really dissociate themselves from hateful, vile, intolerant rhetoric, or tell the truth and explain that they actually have room for those rhetorics and that intolerance within their party. Je pense que le Parti conservateur a besoin d'offrir des explications sincère aux citoyens. C'est un pattern qu'on voit régulièrement. Les conservateurs qui rencontrent, qui encouragent euh, des propos, des, des individus qui avancent des propos euh, intolérants, vicieux, remplis de haine, pour ensuite dire « Oh, on ne le savait pas ». Mais voyons. À un moment donné, ils vont devoir choisir ou bien ils vont condamner sans équivoque ces propos haineux, irresponsables et les gens qui les portent, ou bien ils vont avouer que non, il y a de la place pour ces vues-là à l'intérieur du Parti conservateur du Canada. Ils ne peuvent pas jouer des deux bords constamment. À un moment donné, ça va faire. And the what would be the benefit for Canada of keeping the safe third country agreement? Canada is a signatory to international conventions and as our values as an open and welcoming country that understands the need to support refugees in the world, to examine the claims of anyone who arrives in this country claiming refugee status. 
if we didn't well the, the safe third country agreement does simply says that if someone arrives in Canada after having passed through a country that is considered by the United Nations to be a safe country, a country of asylum, well, the rule is, the principle is, people should have claimed asylum in that first safe country they got to. So people traveling to Canada to claim asylum would have needed first to actually claim asylum in the United States. That's what the safe third country does. And it means that anyone who shows up at a border crossing along the Canada-US border who says, I want to claim refugee status to the Canadian officials at the border, gets told, well, actually, you just came from the United States, so you have to claim refugee status in the United States. That's what the safe third country agreement does. The exception, the loophole that has been found is that if people cross into Canada via Roxham Road or elsewhere and then claim refugee status, we cannot send them back to the United States because they're already in Canada. So the problem isn't with the safe third party agreement. The problem is the safe third country agreement. The problem is with the fact that we cannot apply it across the entirety of our border between official border crossings as well. And that's what we're working on uh, with the United States uh, to try and fix so that the principles of the safe third country, which is you claim asylum in the first safe country you get to, continues to hold. Mr. Prime Minister, the UK is starting to train the Ukrainian Air Force uh, on how to fly uh, high-level aircraft. Uh, Poland could start soon. Given that there is a NATO flight training center in Canada, is Canada willing to bring Ukrainian pilots to train them how to fly jets and other high-level high aircraft? Canada is always looking for ways as to how we can best help in Ukraine. And we do that in many, many different ways. But since 2015, we have been on the ground in Ukraine uh, training up close to 35,000 members of the Ukrainian Defense Force, which has been extraordinarily impactful during these past 12 months of this war, this illegal war. Uh, we will always look on how to uh, support and train where it makes sense for us to do. We're right now training up Ukrainian tank crews on operating Leopard 2s uh, that we are sending. So we're always open to doing more, uh, but we will work with our allies and we will especially work uh, with the Ukrainians uh, to be there to help with how we can best help. Uh, my next question is on a different topic. Uh there are widespread calls for a new national security policy, which has not been updated in almost two decades. Uh, my question is, will Canada devise a new policy? Um, there is no one national security policy in Canada. There are uh, multiple uh, areas of responsibility, multiple layers, multiple uh, processes whereby we defend our national security on many, many different fronts. And I can assure you that we are constantly investing in, upgrading, improving the tools uh, that we have as Canadians and as institutions to continue to keep Canadians safe. Protecting Canadians' safety and security is always going to be job one of, of any government, and we always engage uh, in doing whatever we need to keep Canadians safe. Good afternoon, Prime Minister. Uh, ben Musset from the Toronto Star. Uh, regarding the report from the breach, um, what's your response to charges that one of your ministers undermined the independence of the PMPRB um, by asking them to, to stop consultations? So you're talking about what, the, the breach? The breach, uh, Media Outlet in, in BC, they reported yesterday, I think it was, that Duclos um, asked the PMPRB to stop consultations after being lobbied by the pharmaceutical industry. Um, 
what's your response to that? Um, first of all, we know how important it is to both continue uh, to support research into pharmaceuticals, into life-saving drugs that will help not just in Canada but around the world, and at the same time, uh, ensure that Canadians are paying the lowest possible prices uh, for life-saving medicines. Uh, these are two principles that we work very, very hard on, and we continue to see prices go down and investments in the pharmaceutical industry in Canada go up. Uh, there's always more work to do. We will always make sure uh, that we're doing that the right way. Last question, Daniel question. Um, but do, do you think that that was improper of him to, to intervene like that? And, and how do you think this might uh, impact your deal with the NDP? And, and, and how might you convince them that you're still um, interested in expanding farm care? Uh, we remain committed uh, to ensuring that we're lowering drug prices for Canadians. In this country, nobody should have to choose between buying groceries or getting needed medication. And the fact that that is continuing to happen is something we continue to fight against, continue to work against. We have brought down drug prices significantly by the creation of a national drug agency, uh, by moving forward on uh, high-cost drugs for, low le, for rare diseases uh, approach uh, that is supporting provinces on, on those elements, and we're continuing to move forward on that, and uh, we're happy to work with, uh, with the NDP on that. If if I might, there's uh, another issue that I just wanted to make mention of that, I, that is bothering me. Um, it really surprises me that Google has decided that they'd rather prevent Canadians from accessing news than actually paying journalists for the work they do. I think that's a terrible mistake, and I know Canadians um, expect journalists to be well paid for the work they do. Je pense que c'est extrêmement surprenant que Google préfère empêcher les Canadiens d'accéder aux nouvelles plutôt que de vouloir payer justement les journalistes pour le travail qu'ils font en tant que professionnels. C'est vraiment désolant. Merci beaucoup tout le monde. Thank you. That will conclude today's press conference. Merci. Ça va mettre fin à la conférence presse.